What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steve Nostantoski here of Maze and Brew, bringing you another Michigan basketball highlight video. I have some analysis here for you as well. Today, we're covering Michigan's scary, scary game against Oakland. 81-71 to overtime thriller. And man, was it an ugly game in the first half. There are some theatrics between head coach Juwan Howard and Isaiah Livers. I'll get to that. I'll cover that. Um, Michigan obviously is able to figure it out. Livers and Dickinson, the story of this one. But let's get to the highlights. Let's get to this game. What actually happened? What went down? All right, started this game off with a turnover from uh, Eli Brooks there, and that's a sign of things to come. Nice dish here from Wagner to Livers for the and one. You see Wagner passing there to Livers right on the top of the key. Goes in for the and one layup there. Uh, really good play, good dish, and Livers uh, was a standout performer in this one. This is a nice spin and score against Austin Davis for the end one for Oakland. Oakland had some players. Um, Mike Smith here trying to force the pass. Number four saw it coming all the way. Turns into a basket for Jalen Moore. High usage guy for Oakland by a long shot in this one. Number 34, keep an eye on him. Um, crafty move from Davis down low here with the spin. He gets the and one. Putting together a few nice offensive possessions for Michigan early on in this one. He had six points in a row, I believe or at least six of Michigan's first nine. Here he intercepts a pass that was supposed to go across the lane here, um, but Davis intercepts it, puts down the throwdown dunk, uh, and a good job from him. Three-point from the wing for Oakland. They shot well from the arc in the first half here. Uh, Livers responds with his own three-pointer. This one's a bit contested, but he's able to put it down. And then Eli Brooks joins the party, adds his own three-pointer. Michigan is up early here. Uh, really good ball movement through the zone here. This is probably one of their better possessions. They struggled with the zone throughout the game, but this one, a uh, good pass from Eli to Dickinson out to the wing, and you get a nice uh, nice shot from Brooks here. So Oakland was able to keep it close with some contested threes. That was a theme throughout the game, this one over Eli Brooks. Um, careless turnover here from Wagner. So pass here, Wagner. And this is just something that kind of uh, – this is where I'm going to start the analysis here. Something that just is a, a lack of fundamentals, right? He's got a lot of room here to do a bounce pass like around the defender. If he just does a little pump fake over four, right? He tries to pass over the top here. If he does a little pump fake and then he'll be able to bounce it here, Johns can come out and get it and then back down here. So this is just laziness and this is easily correctable, right? This isn't something that uh, I would expect to continue, just something that's lazy and you, you can't have that. Uh, Brooke here, Brooks here uh, gets called for the travel. Um, I don't think this one was an actual travel. You can see right, see right here right there that so that's his gather foot right gather one two and then pass only thing i think maybe this could have been called is if if you watch his left foot here let me map that out right here if you watch it it might drag right here so let's go frame by frame it might be dragging so that might be what they're calling it um because that would be like a third step there so uh touchy call there were a lot of touchy calls in this one but another turnover there for michigan right um, moving forward here, I thought John's had a really decent game. Uh, he's getting a lot stronger on his moves to the basket. Nice uh, lateral movement there to get some space and finish the layup. So I think he, he's turning into a nice offensive player here for Michigan. Uh, another turnover here. This one I'm less critical of. They're going for uh, Zeb Jackson on the alley. You just couldn't bring it home. Um, and then a nice three-pointer from the corner here uh, from Brooks. Shawnee Brown with turnover. Again, this is another thing where it's just – uh, just careless, right? Um, and Zeb Jackson just can't do this, right? He's trying to, th again, throw over the defender here. And for what reason, right? He has plenty of room here. If you fake and then you bounce pass here and you got an easy three-pointer, right? So he has the right vision to try to get over here. But if he can just pump fake and then get it around here, easy bounce pass after a fake and it's, it's there. So again, these are just take the extra step, take the extra fake, um, and, and it would be there. Instead, it goes uh, turnover from Sean D. Brown and um, turns into an offensive chance. Luckily, Brown, who had a rough day on offense, one for 10 from three-point lane, comes back for the thunderous block there. Nice post moves from Johns here. Looked eerily similar to the move of Davis earlier, and he's able to get a basket here. So nice little spin move, nice physical move down low. And this is just a, a loose ball on this play that I wanted to uh, kind of gripe about, where guys are falling, they're chasing after the ball here, you're going to have Johns dive, and they call it a foul on Johns, and I just don't understand this, where guys are diving all over the place, there's body parts and arms flailing everywhere. To call that on Johns is a little shaky for me. Another turnover here. Eli Brooks just tries to force that one in, um, and then uh, things are just getting ugly. Right, Another turnover right here. This time you just want to see Dave – 
Austin Davis do a little bit better job again. This is the right pass. I mean, he has position here. You just want to see him feel the movement of the defender trying to get around and match that, right? Block him off. Don't let him get out in front of you. Instead, the guy shows some agility to get out in front of Davis and cause that turnover. So it's just nothing that you want to see there. Uh, 6-0 scoring run for Oakland and then another turnover again, right? This is things are just mounting and just getting worse and worse here. And again, this is a thing where you have the pass here. It's just Eli Brooks trying to throw over the defender here instead of a fake and then bounce pass, right? Look at all this space. Look at all this space you have. If, if you pump fake here and this guy goes up, you have a ton of room to provide a bounce pass to Austin Davis towards the top of the key here. Uh, instead, it, it's just that one less step there of trying to go over, and that causes this turnover again. Williams finally with a basket here, powerful move down low, gets his own rebound, then puts it back up. Uh, for the points there, stops the bleeding a little bit. He's become a thumper down low. I like what I see from him in this game. Here's the heated exchange from Howard and Livers. After the game, they said it was nothing but uh, they had nothing but good things to say about each other. So even though they're challenging each other, um, you know they have a good relationship. It seems uh, despite this. So from my point of view, from the outside looking in, it doesn't look great, right? But you got to. You can't use like football as an example here. Who am I to criticize what works, right? The coach knows how to get his players fired up. I'll show Liver's stat line at the end of the game. It obviously worked. <laughs> so, again, who am I to say uh, what their relationship is supposed to look like? It it fired him up. And uh, second half, that he put together a really good performance. So, that's my take on it, all right? Um, moving forward here, turnover Davis. Um, this is just him losing the ball, again, on that spin move. Um, so, better play from Oakland there. And then uh, Williams is put in a little bit of a blender defensively. He still has a way to go on the defensive side there. Uh, offensive foul on Livers. I believe he was taken out of the game after this. He probably did extend the arm. I think there might be a little bit of embellishment on the uh, Oakland player here, but I bet he probably did push off a little bit there on 34, who's undersized as well. Um, and then here's another turnover. Again, I don't. this one is less excusable than some of the others. I mean, with the amount they had, they none of them were excusable. But this is just a huge no-no. Um, really what Shondre Brown should have done here is pass to Johns. You have this guy closing out really hard coming out to Shondre Brown. Brown doesn't have any room here, right? He's trying to force this when he realizes that this isn't going to work. You're going to have this guy collapsing as well. Then you have two defenders here, and then he tries to go over the top, and you have 34 who's able to intercept that pass. Instead, with this pass from Terrence Williams, which is a good pass, if Shondre Brown immediately passes this right here, then you have two options, 15 Obviously, has to defend here, which then gives an easy pass for uh, Johns out to the wing here to Zeb Jackson, who could possibly uh, loop it around to Franz. You can get your passing movement here really well. Instead, he tries to force this to the baseline where he doesn't have a whole lot of movement, and that gives time for defenders to collapse and other ones to cut off any passing lanes after that. So uh, just got to be smarter than that. Take those passes instead of trying to force it in this zone that was causing Michigan a lot of headaches, right? This one, Wagner just not able to go, right? I haven't shown a whole lot with him. That's a clear walk, in my opinion, there. He's just not able to get anything going. He only had, like, I think six points this game, maybe even less. I have to check the the box score. But he did not do much uh, this game. So Michigan was down at half. We're down in the start of the second half here. But, uh, but yeah, Michigan just wasn't able to get anything going. The shooting was bad. Turnovers, Michigan had 15 turnovers compared to 12 field goals in that first half. So that's just obviously unacceptable. You're not going to win many games with that. They're actually lucky to only be down two in that half after that performance. Smith, I didn't call Mike Smith the transfer from Columbia. He was huge in game one. He was out with two fouls early. Michigan had to rely a lot on Eli Brooks. They had Zeb Jackson in there a little bit. Um, and, and it showed how much reliance I think that Michigan has at with Mike Smith at the point guard position. So, um, relying on livers a lot with Wagner struggling as well. And uh, they're trying to still kind of like find those answers with only 31 points in the first half. So Mike Smith right away in the second half here, nice up and under to score a basket there. Again, he, the pace he plays with brings a new dynamic, a different dynamic to this offense. Here he is again, passing off the wing to livers who drops off a three Michigan's hot out of this half. Um, and again, that's just the pacing that Mike Smith brings. Um, while turnovers were not as big of a problem in this half, here's an alley-oop attempt to, uh, to Isaiah Livers that just doesn't work out. Here's a contested three as the shot clock goes down against Franz. That's just tough. Um, what do you do against that? And then Franz continues to have a tough game. This is a charge. He just barrels into this guy who is just in front of that restricted zone down in the key. I think that's what you call it. 
anyway, just tough, tough game for him overall. He just can't get anything going, picking up some fouls, uh, a couple charges here, and it's just tough. Another three-point attempt from Oakland. Livers closes out a bit too hard, and another three-point. Again, contested three, and Oakland's just knocking them down in this one. Trading baskets here. Livers from the corner for a three off an inbounds pass. Nice to see him. And then a, a good drive here from Jalen Moore, putting up a really tough shot. You know, it's not an easy basket. That guy, um, high usage, not a good percentage, but he's a tough player. Franz, again, this one I think is a BS call. Um, I don't know how this is a charge. I think this guy is clearly moving. I'll slow it down. That guy's clearly in motion. I don't see like a forearm shove uh, out of out of Wagner there. I just I don't agree with this call at all. So they were doing this a lot, and I don't think Michigan got a single blocking call on any of these. So that's just tough when they're calling it like that. Um, you know, Wagner relies on his drive a lot, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just not good. Um, so anyway. Another turnover. So more here for Oakland, able to hit another tough shot uh, right here. Um, just a little step back, deep two, and, and uh, Oakland's up six here. This is where it becomes the Hunter Dickinson show. All right, let me back up here. Williams with a really nice feed here. The Williams to Dickinson connection is becoming real. Nice feed on the bounce pass, and Dickinson just kind of takes over. All right. Um, really nice bounce pass again. Terrence Williams showing uh, some early playing time, really good returns from him. Brown able to feed to Dickinson, who gets fouled. And Dickinson was seven for nine from free throws. That's huge for this team. Really good job from Brown on this on this play. So despite having a rough one for 10 three-point shooting performance in this one, he's able to close out here, get a block. He was really good defensively. We'll show on a couple other plays. Uh, it's just good to see. Um, elite pass here from Dickinson to Williams for the and one. And this is just... This is what you like to see, right? I th that was a huge part of Dickinson's profile coming in is uh, not only his ability down low, but his passing, and it's just immediate. Boom, boom. That does not look like a freshman pass. Him having the awareness to provide that ball to Williams coming down there uh, is huge, and getting that bounce pass in there quick and hot and on target is just huge for the end one, and Williams, again, finishing well. So even with that, Oakland's still coming back, right? Able to hit this tough shot over Dickinson. No one's really going to hit that shot at a high clip, but they were able to, to put in some tough baskets. Brown misses from the wing here. Nice feed from uh, Mike Smith. But Dickinson, one-handed tip in with the and one foul. Again, Dickinson just taking over here. He needs more minutes. Feed the guy. Feed him. Simply no answer. Watch, And then here he is again. There's just no answer for Oakland. And then watch the defense for Brown on this one. All right, Defend on the wing, close out on the shot. Stick with them, cut off the baseline, oh, and then the strip, right? They called it out of bounds um, right here, but uh, it was close. But regardless, this is just an, a really good play from Shawty Brown, and he's proving himself on defense even if his shot wasn't here on this game. So credit to him for not giving up on this play. Um, but really good job here. Close on the shot, redirect here, cut off that lane, cut off the baseline, strip the ball. I mean, that's just textbook. And uh, the unfortunate part here, this is inbounds pass right after this possession he closes out on a tough like fadeaway three and the guy nails it right so it's just like come on that's deflating that's a really well performance from shawnee brown on that possession and uh just didn't pay off oakland is able to get that tough one down um worst charge call of the game here against mike smith i think this was his fourth foul here and i don't know what the refs are looking at if you look right here uh mike smith is clearly going past him 34 has not established his positioning here he's still shuffling um I mean, there's like a, an arm bar there, but not like an extension to push him off, really. So Mike Smith beats him to the spot. The guy shuffles in there. For them to not call a single block on any of these is pretty atrocious. So that's tough when Mike Smith brought a little bit of a spark here. And uh, now he's out with four fouls. And that's your, uh, that's your starting point guard who's out now. Um, anyway, Williams uh, is going to have a feed here again to Dickinson after this replay again. I can't get over that foul call. And Howard can't either. It's just BS. So here's a nice feed from uh, Williams down to Dickinson. He's able to get another basket. Again, just unstoppable connection here between Williams and Dickinson. Dickinson himself, a good body control around the baseline there. Um, here's a hook and hold. And this is another call where they called this a two-way foul. I think it's pretty clearly a hook and hold. You could maybe have a reach in there for uh, Williams, but I don't know. They call a double foul, just questioning and officiating here. Really good feed from Brooks to Hunter Dickinson with a dunk there. That's just a really good feed down low. Um, and I wanted to just kind of point out the like why this play works, and there's multiple multiple players who who make this possible. So first thing that you you have 
Brooks do is identify this open space, right? He identifies this is where I can go, empty spot in the zone, and this will open up any one of these guys based on the reaction of the zone from Oakland. So he attacks right here. And a key aspect about this is the baseline cut out of uh, livers here. What that's going to do, that's going to necessitate number 11 here to flow over and cut this off. And that's important because as Eli Brooks drives, this guy falling back this way will open up Dickinson. All right, so let's move forward here a little bit. See, so he drives into the lane. Come on, Premier. Drive to the lane here and look at what this does. This sucks up two guys. And then like what I say, you have livers coming, cutting backside here. That's going to necessitate this guy to come down. But since you have these two guys focusing on Eli Brooks and this guy late to adjust and get back here, you have this open lane here. And then with the feed here, with you, you have livers here that necessitates this guy to fall back here. You have no one uh, to get on Dickinson by the time that the bounce pass gets there. So that's just a well well run play. Good job from Eli Brooks attacking the zone, getting multiple guys uh, to collapse, and that is what allows this to open up. All right. So again, pass from uh, Brown here uh, to Dickinson, and a very nice feed across court, and that opens up a dunk for Livers. And again, how does this play happen? It's only because Dickinson attracts a lot of attention now. All right. Dickinson with the ball here, he's attracting two guys. Boom and boom. These guys are collapsing. You have uh, number one on Williams here. They have two guys here to account for these three guys here. Okay. Look at all the space that you have over here for livers. Dickinson knows that. He feeds it across, and that requires a lot of movement from these guys all on like the midcourt, like to this side. If I draw a midpoint right here up the key, they're all on the wrong side of the court. So they have to adjust and all flow this way and adjust because of this fast pass across the court. All right, so that's a really good feed from Dickinson here to Livers. And watch what happens, okay? Because of that quick pass, you have everyone scrambling, right? This guy has to adjust. He has to decide, okay, am I going to fill here or am I going to come out and, and de defend Eli Brooks at the point here? Well, he has to come out to the point here, and that's because he has number three coming up to defend Livers, right? This guy's closing out on this uh, shot fake that Livers, look at his eyes. He's looking at the basket. He's thinking he's going to go for a shot here. So this guy's going to go out and guard Eli Brooks, who's asking for the ball here. And this guy's going to close out here to cut that off. The issue here, you still have Williams here, right? So these guys have to adjust and try to get in front of Williams because with this guy uh, avoiding this, getting out of the key here, this is a potential passing lane for Livers. So you just you have too many guys over here for the threat and all the spacing here. That's what this pass does. It's with space and a lot of guys moving their momentum, taking them out of this play. Livers does a really good job with his shot fake here. He's able to shot fake. That guy abandons to go cover Eli Brooks. And you have Livers with a free path to the basket because of Williams there. And he's actually like screening a guy uh, to get to the basket. And it's just a really nice play. Really well executed. Good fake from Livers to open up that dunk opportunity overall. All right, and then I hate this call. You're going to see this guy goes up for a shot fake. Eli Brooks gets off his feet. And then the guy just launches himself into Eli Brooks, picks up the foul. That's just, it's the correct call, but I hate it. There's no way that's his natural shooting motion. Anyway, here's a feed to Dickinson again. Drops it off for Livers. Should have been a foul here, but a really nice feed to Livers for uh, two points here. And then you uh, have a nice drive here. Nice block, though, from Livers. Picks up a really nice block. And then here's a huge penalty call. All right, I'll back up. Watch the baseline. All right, so look at Livers on the baseline. And he's going to give just a little bit of a forearm shove, and the guy just, like, falls out of bounds. There's no way that you can't convince me this guy's just selling a foul. That's just BS. He's just, like, a little hand check. He's not, like, really pushing this guy. He's, I mean, that's embellishment. And he, he is, I don't think it's any coincidence that he, like, falls into the ref here, right? So, anyway, that puts Oakland on the line. They hit two free throws. This is the last play for Michigan in regulation tie game. They're not able to get anything past the point here. Um, it seems like, and, and this is the, actually the first time I'm noticing this, it seems like they missed an opportunity right here with the Livers crossing down the baseline right here. If he can fake here or like feed here, he's open on, on three-point line down here. Um, so anyway, just not the best ball movement, not the best play that was drawn up here. I don't know exactly what the play was. Eventually, the play is going to deflect into Hunter Dickinson's hand off of uh, a attempted pass from Shondi Brown, 
and Dickinson can't put away the off-balance shot here, and we're headed to overtime. Luckily for Michigan, they still have Hunter Dickinson, and this is just the Hunter Dickinson show, all right? First possession here, he's triple teamed off the feed from Livers, and it doesn't matter, double teamed, whatever. Um, and good defense here from Dickinson near the basket. Number 34 is going to drive like he did all game. Actually, that's Franz, excuse me. Franz with the long length, kind of disrupting that. And then you have another feed here to Dickinson, able to get around, pick up the foul. Again, seven for nine from the free throw line. That was huge. Another foul here. They, they didn't have an answer except fouling, and he can hurt you from the free throw line as well. Um, here is a nice drive from Brooks. He's able to put it up. A miss, and this is the possession that really won Michigan in the game. Shondi Brown saves it. Franz back to Livers. He shoots from three, and boom, 90 seconds left. That puts Michigan up nine. That's a huge, huge basket. Nice job from Franz to find Livers back there. Good job from Shondi Brown to uh, get it back from out of bounds. Franz with the dunk, again, sealing it, and just ice it again. Here's Livers delivering the three ball. Michigan picks up their game, picks up the first half and the shambles that that was and turn it into a win 81 71 over Oakland. Um, so what did we learn here? Right? So let's look at, let's first look at the stat line for Michigan. All right. Yeah. Livers 22 points, eight for 12, uh, five for seven from three point line, uh, three rebounds, three assists, four blocks, uh, really becoming a force on the defensive side, especially blocking. He's, he's getting much more involved there. Um, Dickinson, story of the game for me, 19 points, 6 for 8 on the floor. Only 4 rebounds, would like to see a little bit more there, and 4 assists. And then Wagner, even though he struggled with only 6 points, not the best day for him. He did put in 13 rebounds, that was a game high. Uh, 3 assists and 2 steals, that length on the defensive side proving to still be an asset overall. So, what did we learn? Hunter Dickinson needs to start and needs to start today, right? I actually really like Austin Davis. I think he provides a really nice floor for the position overall, but Dickinson is clearly ready. He's a little bit over, older than a traditional freshman at 20 years old, but the things he's doing is opponent independent, right? He's, 70, he's 72. He's a seven foot two guy, and there's not a whole lot of bigs in even the Big Ten that will be able to oppose him or to compete with his size. I think uh, outside of Illinois and Coburn, uh, he can still have a really high efficiency like he did in this game. Uh, number two, Livers seems to be himself again, maybe even half a step up of where he was last year. Obviously, he's probably a little bit more confident with that injury past him, um, but he obviously put in a really good game. Good job from Howard to fire him up a little bit, and good job from Livers responding to that in a really efficient game. And without his performance, Michigan doesn't pull out this win. Um, and then number three, Wagner is a little bit worrying right now, right? Two games where he hasn't really shown a, a, a whole lot on the offensive side. Um, still contributed on the box score, right? His length got him a couple steals, 13 rebounds. That's still really good to see. Uh, so just want to see him improve a little bit, get that offensive production. I think a lot of us were expecting from him this year. If he does, and this brings a lot more dynamic offensive play for the Wolverines this year. So leave me a comment on what you think the X factor for this team is moving forward. Who do you want to see step up? Uh, who do you think could really change the outlook of this team? I think Terrence Williams could be one of those names as well. But let me know. I want to hear your thoughts. Throw a like on the video as well. And then finally, before you go, if you can subscribe to the channel, we're about 100 subscribers away from 2,000. Let's get to that milestone. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed thus far. And then that's it, guys. We have a couple games coming up. Michigan hockey on Wednesday. Basketball again on Wednesday. Um, obviously no football this weekend. But anyway, catch you on the next one. Stay safe out there. And as always, go blue.